Have you ever wanted to record 360 demo videos to put on YouTube to show off your environment? Look at this. You can hit play, things roll around, and you can pan the camera all on YouTube on Chrome. Well, now you can with help of the Export Object plugin. To install this, all you gotta do is go to this GitHub link, which is in the description of this YouTube video, or on the forum post that you found this video on. Hit download zip, and you'll start downloading the zip. Now this zip has some stuff in it, and uh, it's pretty straightforward to install. Here we go. So you open this folder up, and you're gonna get two folders. One is called Put This In Your Content Folder. Easy enough. Find your project folder, go to your content folder, and just dump this shit right in. Uh, go export, or oh, not this one, nope. Uh, stereoscopic render right into your content folder, so you have a folder in your content folder called Stereoscopic Render. Cool. That gives you the, the basic blueprint stuff, and you don't necessarily need to do this, but it'll help you get you started. Next, go to your engine folder, and remember, you gotta build this from source, which is already mentioned earlier, in the description and on the forum post. So go to your engine folder, go to your plugins, go to developer, and go to the folder that says put this in your engine plugins developer folder. Go ahead and take this folder and just copy it over. Once you do this, you're going to need to generate project files, which if you've built from the engine from source, if you built the engine from source, blah, uh, you will be already aware of this. And then once you do this, go ahead and compile your UE4 like you would in Visual Studio, like you normally do all the time. And you'll say, well, yeah, all this is normal. You compile it, and then once you compile it, open up your editor in your project, and go ahead and open up the stereo example map. It should look something like this. You can find it in your content stereoscopic render folder. My UI looks a little bit different than yours, but that's okay. I'm running on 4.7.6, but this also works on later versions, and yeah. So if you go to uh, any blueprint graph, I'm going to open up the camera blueprint here. Now all this is pretty straightforward. I'll explain the variables here, but I won't explain the graph here. You'll see that the plugin adds a new node called export object to path. And what this does is it takes in any object, any arbitrary object, uh, textures, meshes, whatever. For now we're using texture render cubes. And the save file name, a little bit of a misnomer, uh, you give this an export directory, such as c colon backslash panoramic renders, and it'll export your file to this path. And then it gives there's a parameter called file name appendage, which lets you add on to the file name in case you want to do something like frame capture, which is what we're doing here. Now the uh, blueprint camera, uh, the blueprint camera, the stereoscopic camera blueprint rig I set up here uh, has a few default options. So you pop this into a level. If you're on the example level, you'll see that there's already one placed here for you. Uh, there is a left eye texture and a right eye texture. These need to be bound to render target texture cubes. Uh, to do that, you go to your content browser, make a new material texture category, Duh. go to materials and textures, go to cube render target, hit this, and you get a cube render target. I've already made two which are provided in the zip file you've already downloaded called left eye and right eye, but you can do, you can make your own or whatever you want. Now, you'll notice that if you look at the given render targets, you'll see that this has a size of 2048. This size is the vertical size. The horizontal size is double this. So setting this to 2048 means you're going to be capturing a 4096 by 2048 image. And these are really expensive to, to generate. So you're not going to get very good performance when you do this. So once you have these set up, uh, there's also another option provided called stereo. And what stereo does is it lets you toggle whether or not you want um, left eye only or left and right eye exported. And here, under stereo, you can set the export directory. Uh, default, it's C underscore panoramic renders, but you can set this to anything you want on any drive. And now frame num lets you uh, say what frame you want to start at in case you uh, need to label your frames a certain way. It's starting at, say, frame 100 or negative 100, whatever you want to do. And then frame skip until after. This allows you to resume renders. Because this is a very RAM intensive process, you are most likely going to crash. This thing is very unstable and it eats up a lot of RAM. So say you crash after frame 97, you can uh, put in frame, it's, it's recommended to put in the frame before you crash. So if you crashed on 97, you should render out 96, 97. So you can put in 96 in here. And if you're running a benchmark mode, the camera will try, will render the first 95 frames or 96 frames, but it won't actually export out the camera target data. 
it will only it will only export after 96 and because of that it speeds up your resume process if you're crashing a lot and with that uh, all you gotta do is in your level blueprint I recommend putting a delay of one second on begin play so your textures can load and then set your camera rigs export on tick to true then put a delay for how long you want to record and set it to false setting this export on tick to true or false turns on the exporting process on and off and the frame numbers don't change until export on tick is true so frame numbers don't increase until export on tick is enabled yeah so with that um it, you can check out the event graph if you want to change some stuff around here with all that set up uh, which is already set up for you if you put all this in uh, what I recommend is loading up in benchmark mode and benchmark mode is a way to run 4.7.6 at a fixed frame rate 4.8 has, has a project setting where you can run at a fixed frame rate but if you don't have that you can do is what you can do is you can make a batch file and the, your batch file should simply take the path to your editor your project path or if it's if the project is in the same as your engine folder structure, you can just put the name of your project without the .u project extension. Then the map, which is stereo example, make sure you're running a game client. And because it's an editor build, you can run at a smaller resolution and still export uh, bigger render targets. So I use 800 by 600. Then this benchmark and FPS settings, these make the game run in a locked fixed rate so that you can only run 30 frames a second and it will render every frame regardless if it took more than the intended frame time and then no texture streaming use all available cores and log just helps you get better quality and see what's going on as it's happening now if you run this you're going to get small little window they're 800 by 600 window and it's going to be really laggy it's going to take quite some time to get things going but in the log file here you'll see uh, after a second because we have that one delay a second you'll start seeing export logs here and it does take some time to export this and it does eat up your RAM so if you crash doing this or your computer freezes sorry I can't help you uh, there are probably ways to optimize this but uh, this is as is no support for me currently but if you have any contributions please commit them to the github to make this better and once you render out all these frames you can go in After Effects you can import the uh, the HDR image sequence you can just click on the first file of your sequence hit import and right click new comp from selection and you got a 360 panoramic video here that you can render out to an mp4 once you render this out to an mp4 if you want to play this on Google perhaps then you need to download the 360 uh, metadata tool which is found on this link which will be available in the YouTube description or on this forum post or on the github readme once you download this tool you just open it up and feed it your mp4 and then hit inject and save save it out as another mp4 and if you upload this mp4 then you get something very similar to the video that I showed in the beginning of this video which is this thing here where you can move around and yeah so very cool that's how you set things up and render things and have fun